The next one of our fancy filters in here, more complex filters, is the Liquify. Now this is kind of like doing finger painting. Real interesting tool. Does a lot of stuff. Very large box as you can see here. Let me see if, how much I can squeeze this in. See if I can get this thing to fit inside of the window a little bit better. Not too well. That's about as small as I can make this unfortunately. So we can't quite see the bottom of this. But looking over on the right hand side, just off down below you can choose to put a mask in and show a mask or not. And below that you can choose to show a backdrop. That's all that's missing on this. So let's zoom to the, or move over here to the right and look at the left side and look at our tools. We have a warp tool and a reconstruct tool and then we have a twirl tool, pucker and bloat, pushed left, mirror tool, turbulence tool, freeze mask and thaw mask and a zoom. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Hold the alt key down. Let's zoom out. That's pretty good, just like that. If you're zoomed in, you can use the hand tool to move the image around inside of your view area. Now, starting at the top, here's our first tool. I'm just going to do it right across here. You can see what happens. It actually grabs the pixels and pulls them. And you kind of shove the pixels around almost as if you're working with wet paint. And if you're just finger painting, you can come in and do some real kind of weird fancy special effects, anything you want, just like mixing around finger paint like that. Now working with this particular tool up here, we have options. Brush size, see it's a pretty good size brush right now. I can bring the brush size down by using this slider control. There's a smaller brush. It's a little larger brush. Here's a much larger brush. The bigger the brush, the larger the area is that it affects, as you can see there. Let's bring that down a bit. You can adjust the density. The higher the density, the more effect the brush has. The lower the density, the less effect. Brush pressure, same kind of options here. Again, higher pressure, the more effect it has. Lower pressure, the less effect it has. We have reconstruct options down here, and that is using the reconstruct tool. So this is now switch over here to the reconstruct mode. We have revert, rigid, stiff, smooth, loose, displace, amply twist, and affine. Lots of options in here on reconstruct. What the reconstruct does is it actually lets you paint the image back to the original setting. Just like that. So I'm, I'm leaving the background kind of wacky and I'm going to just reconstruct the ship here. There we go. And let's go back then to our messy tool and I can mess up the water around this. There we go, giving it kind of a impressionistic look and leaving the image the same. Notice that we do have some transparency showing out here on the outside edges. If you're working right against the edge, you may be pulling in a little bit of edge transparency in there. You can choose to reconstruct the last step or reconstruct all distortions just by clicking on this one and that reverts everything to its previous setting. Now this can all be done while you're using this regular tool up here. You actually can do these reconstructions. Come back in here. I'll do a little bit of messy stuff again and then we're using the rigid reconstruction. Just a little different on how that, that comes in. So those are the two basic finger paint tools, finger paint in and finger paint out. Next down we have a twirl tool. I'm going to choose a little larger brush size here. And click and hold, it actually twirls the image. Let me put it down here, you can see a little better down here. It actually twirls the image. You can speed that up by increasing the size of the brush right here. There we go or decrease that by bringing the brush rate down. It goes a little slower. If you pull back and forth, it speeds it up. If you just hold it, it slows it down. And if I pull it across, it actually will do that twisting motion as I'm going across, just like that. And you can go back and forth and really add in lots of weird twisty stuff. There we go. 
Again, we can reconstruct doing a couple of steps here. It just takes us back just a few steps or restore all back to the original setting. On any of these, you also can mask the image. Actually, place a mask in here. Let's go over here and choose the Freeze Mask tool. If you freeze something, it prevents that from being acted upon by the filter. So I'm going to kind of come in here and just paint around the ship a little bit. This will freeze this part of the ship and give me a protection for this part of the image. Freezes the pixels. In reality, what we're doing here is we are creating a mask and the mask is then used to create a selection and that selection is everything that's not covered by the mask and we're then applying the effect to that selection. Just like we did previously when we were talking about masks, it's just called freezing and unfreezing in here. But th if you think of it as a mask, it works the same way as regular masking tools do or making a selection. So there we go. That's all frozen now, which means that this has been masked out and the area out here has been selected. So I can then go to my other tools. Let's bring the brush size up a bit here. And notice how I can now smear my image this way, but it's not affecting the picture. Even though I can smear elements of the picture out of that picture. You can see the little white in there. I'm actually smearing some of the color from the ship out of the ship. See a little right down in there as well. So even though the ship is protected, it doesn't mean that you can't be using some of the coloration from the ship. But it just protects the ship just like that. Let's just restore everything. The next tool down here allows you to erase out that protection. So one applies it, the other one erases it, and you can use this just to refine your edges. If you've made too much of a protected area, you can come in with this tool. I'm using a smaller brush right now and just come in and clean up a little bit. That's why I'm not masking quite as much stuff. So you can use that to refine the edge of your mask. Okay, going back to these tools again. We have the pucker tool. I'm going to remove the mask. There we go. And let's look at the pucker tool. That's pretty good. And this squeezes the image in. I'm just clicking and holding. Squeezes it in. You can squeeze it in whatever you want to, just like that. Or you can pull it, and it squeezes as you pull. So let's restore that one. Next tool, the bloat tool does the opposite. It actually brings the shape out just like that. You've seen this particular effect on greeting cards all the time. People use this one a lot. This is where you see the cats and the dogs with the eyes that are bloated out. Just get a regular picture of a cat or a dog, set the brush size to fit the eye, and then use a little bit of this bloat tool and you'll actually bloat those eyes out like that. Let's restore that one. The next tool pushes the pixels left. So I pull down here, it pushes them one direction. If I push it up, it pushes the pixels the other direction. So you can kind of push your pixels back and forth. Notice that they push the length of the tool I'm using, the size of the tool. You see it right there. There we go. So you can push these pixels left or right. And let's restore that. I'm going real dramatic on these. You can use these things for very subtle effects. If you use a small brush size, bring your density and brush pressure down. You can use this for just small effects as well. This next one flips the image. As you can see right there, there's the front of the image. just flipped over. And we'll back up a little bit, restore all. There we go. And the final option is a turbulence tool and just adds in kind of a turbulence effect. Works similar to the finger or forward warp tool, but not quite the same. All right, let's reconstruct that. And let's just use this a little bit. I'm going to come up here to this twirl clockwise. Let's bring our brush size down a bit. We can mask everything or not mask everything, depending upon how you want to work. Mask all is useful if you want to 
use your eraser tool to make your mask if this is a faster option for you. Now we'll just use this tool a little bit in here. So it's doing a backwards mask basically using the mask all to give us the mask and then using the eraser tool to adjust that. And let's go to our twirl and I'm just going to do some twirling in here. And I'll give this image a little bit of a Vincent Van Gogh look. Works out well down there. And uh, let's hide that. So we've now used the tool to give us Vincent Van Gogh style painting around this ship. So there you go. Interesting tool. You can have a lot of fun with this if you play with it and practice with it a little bit. And that's right there, the liquify.